right, so the first thing I want to dive into is just to let you know a little bit about who is, uh, who is WorldViz, who is Bryce. So uh, WorldViz uses immersive technology to enhance the way people create, learn, and collaborate. This is our mission statement. WorldViz has been at this for 20 years. So as a pioneer in simulation, uh, the origins of WorldViz were through a collaboration between the psychology departments of MIT and UCSB. Virtual reality uh, has been used and continues to be used in psychology and engineering training, uh, psychology experiments, I should say, in engineering training because of some of the qualities of VR, being able to create uh, standards and controls and then experiment so that you can replicate and on the back end, uh, retrieve meaningful data. And uh, I think it's important to point out some of those origins and some of those early reasons for creating virtual reality and immersive scenes because they're starting to translate into the healthcare space where you want to recreate uh, re repeatable simulation scenarios that you can use as training environments so that your students get a meaningful education and something that you can replicate uh, cohort after cohort or class after class. So this, uh, this history that WorldViz has in VR and simulation goes way back and includes uh, expertise in hardware and software development. So WorldViz has its own VR authoring toolkit called Vizard and, uh, and several hardware adjuncts that fit into virtual reality and immersive simulation uh, environments. So we've been delivering solutions worldwide for this whole 20-year uh, history of the company. I got my introduction to virtual reality and simulation at WorldViz in about 2005, and I worked uh, with WorldViz installing VR systems around the world and, uh, and got to see all the latest and greatest hardware of the time for about five, six years. Uh, I collaborated with researchers and scientists and training, uh, training programs to, to get them off the ground using immersive virtual reality. I then took a tour through healthcare. So my history kind of uh, separated from WorldViz, where I, where I then learned about all of what's going on in the healthcare community and how they're adopting and leveraging these virtual reality tools and immersive tools in order to enhance the way people learn and, uh, and, and use VR for simulation, for medical simulation, which also has its own history and goes back even longer and uh, even longer than the WorldViz history and has been leveraging simulation mannequins and different types of task trainers and all sorts of tools in order to recreate simulation uh, environments to practice medical, medical training. So after doing this whirlwind tour through healthcare, I've rejoined WorldViz uh, to help bring immersive simulation into healthcare. So seeing WorldViz as this pioneer and an expert in virtual reality and simulation tools and hardware development, software and user interfaces, and then seeing what's going on in healthcare and this boom in, in acceptance and adoption of this type of technology, it's been really great to rejoin a team that has the expertise that can now start focusing some of, the, uh, some of that on applications that can support the healthcare uh, community. So the world of this ecosystem goes far beyond what we're talking about today, which is our PRISM immersive simulation room. But just to give you a snapshot of all the things that, that WorldViz uh, can cover, because I know some of these programs that you may work with are, are working in VR and 3D and all sorts of other um, applications. Just want to just take a quick, quick moment to acknowledge that we, uh, this is kind of our ecosystem where we have products and expertise, including consulting services, so design and development uh, services, if for custom solutions and custom applications, our Vizard VR engine, which is uh, one of the first VR engines for developing uh, 3D environments and interactive 3D experiences, uh, VizMove solutions, which are our products, meaning we deliver fully installed turnkey VR projection systems, uh, Prism, and head-mounted display or VR goggle-based solutions. And then Visible, which is a collaboration software. We're going to keep that out of this conversation just for, uh, for time's sake. So a lot of these products uh, and expertise that we've gained through the development and, uh, and work in different industries has allowed us to really expand and then grow the way that we develop user interfaces and meet the needs of particular industries with particularly targeted products. So uh, getting back to PRISM VR and 
what this means to healthcare. I think it's it's uh, helpful to kind of take a look at this this uh, graph we put together, showing kind of the why behind what it is we're creating. So we can think of contextual control along one axis and scenario realism along along another, and uh, and we can place firmly part pass trainers up in high contextual control where you can repeat a an exercise over and over again and gain you know, fluency in IV insertion or a particular skill that you would change, train with the part task trainer. And then we can think of clinical rotations kind of on the other end of that spectrum as highly realistic. It is uh, you know beyond a scenario, it is a, a true clinical case. So you're on rotation and you're seeing real patients with real pathology. So those would be highly realistic, but very little contextual control. So meaning if you took one class and toured through a hospital and then another class, you toured through a hospital a following day, you might see completely different patients. So we believe that scenario training as a whole is, is intending to bridge that gap. You're taking uh, the idea that you wanna create as much realism as possible and you wanna create as much control as possible so that as you go through these training experiences, you can uh, you can replicate that. Maybe you even want to scaffold uh, that that training and start at a lower level and build. But you want to be able to recreate your training experiences so that you can present that to class after class and create meaningful outcomes based on the work you do in putting together these these training scenarios. So the point being, virtual reality or immersive simulation, uh, all of the technology that we're throwing at uh, simulation centers at this point is aimed to push that arch even further out towards bridging the gap between contextual control and scenario realism. So PRISM falls into that category where now you're creating a real scenes based on images and videos that you can capture even from local environments. And you are, uh, and you are adding the control of reproducing that scene time and again. So this can be done in different ways. And I leave, we leave it very intentionally saying virtual because we understand there are many solutions out there including some of the applications that are VR goggle based that aim to do the same thing. So it's just an acknowledgement that the industry, the healthcare industry is really pushing in this direction and it's opening up a lot of doors to create improved experiences for students who can then be better prepared for their, uh, their clinical uh, careers in the future. So uh, what is PRISM and, uh, and how does it work? I think the, the before we go back to, we're gonna take a step away from this slide and I'm gonna just uh, kind of acknowledge the room that I'm in and take a minute to go through a couple scenes. And we're gonna do that again at the end where I'll just go through a little bit more of a whirlwind tour. But we're gonna pause at this slide and I'm just gonna kind of walk through uh, what it is we're, we're looking at. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here for a second. So hopefully that refocuses your screen on the larger uh, the larger site here. I'm going to turn my lights off. And now you can see I'm walking around this, this gallery mode, which is showing me all the different scenes that I've kind of categorized right now for, for this demonstration. And if I touch one of them, it immediately transports me to, in this case, an operating room. So there is the option to add, you know, uh, sound, where you could you could add beats or the hums of different machines or the or people walking or talking. You could actually create this as a video, where where that would all be happening around you and captured as that same media file. Um, and you can embed triggers that will bring up relevant information that could that could help guide a scenario that you're working through. So for example, here I've placed an, icon, an information icon on this table showing some of the medical devices that could be found there. And if I click it, it brings up a larger image of some of the devices that be found on that, on that, uh, that table of the tray. I can also walk over here, I put a heart just as an example to show um, that I can pull up an image that I would want to display on this television. Or again, over here on this monitor, if I click this icon, it's gonna bring up an image of you know, an X-ray from this jockey who, uh, who tragically broke his arm. So just showing you that the, the walls are interactive, they're full screen interactive, meaning you can place icons anywhere. They can be invisible or visible icons. So I can touch over here, bring up a cardio start, pull it away. If I wanna go back to my gallery mode, I simply swipe my wall and it takes me back to kind of my scene management system here where I can now go into an urgent care. So you can transition between scenes quite easily. Here I've got an embedded uh, you know, patient information so I can bring this up. I can now address my patient in the room. So 
I should have uh, I should have acknowledged that you uh, you would traditionally be working through these scenes with you know technology in the room. You would have your simulation mannequin or your standardized patient that you're working with, and the room sets up the immersive environment that is intended to evoke a sense of presence in a particular space. So the idea that you're you have visuals beyond your eye line, you've got sounds, we can add scent, uh, and we'll talk about some of the other adjuncts that you can that you can bring into the environment. But very quickly, I just want to kind of go through a couple of these, give you an idea of how quickly and easily you can you can uh, fire up different scenes, and then work within that scene, add information in that scene, use it as a presentation environment, and then very quickly scan out of that scene. All right, so let's pop back into the presentation for a moment, and then we'll get back into some more scenes in it. Uh, you know, I, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this presentation, I apologize for this. If you have comments or questions, please put them in the question uh, box because that's going to allow us to build a slide at the end of the presentation where we can um, where we can address all those questions. So if you have anything uh, you know that you think of while we're going through, we're not taking question and answer as I as I uh, walk through the presentation, but following the presentation, I'll dig into any anything and everything you guys come up with. All right, so back to the presentation. So what is Prism? Exactly what I just showed you is an integrated hardware and software product. It is uh, includes high definition surround projection, high fidelity surround sound, and intuitive touch interaction. So hopefully you got a, a quick demonstration of all of that. And again, if there's questions about any of the uh, the hardware or software um, that's implemented, please put that into the questions uh, questions box. The goal and the intention of Prism was to address the healthcare industry with a no-code scene authoring tool, acknowledging that SIM operators, managers, anybody in this, uh, this industry, although they may have SSIH credentials and certifications, they don't have programming certifications in general. There may be some outliers, but in uh, the community that I've met and worked with over the last 10 years uh, has, has not been one that can easily move into you know, C++ or Python coding. So, very intentionally, the PRISM interface is a no-code scene authoring tool, meaning it's drag and drop. You grab a 360 image or video file and you bring it into the environment simply by dragging it as you would a file into a folder in you know, Windows Explorer. You're, you're using an included 360 camera that comes with the system. You take your camera anywhere you want, snap a picture and, uh, or a video, and then you drag it into the environment and it's, it's simply that easy. And then building in the interaction is also on a single layer interface built for SIM operators uh, to intentionally so that they can, they can work with the tools. So it's expandable user created content. This is important because it localizes your scenes and scenarios. When you're working with a nursing program or an EMS program or med school, and you have a local hospital or clinic that you, that you run rotations through, uh, it can be very useful to capture images or videos from those scenes so that you can bring them into the training environment. If there were a, a limiting uh, factor, for example, an operating room that you don't get a lot of access to, that you want to recreate, and you don't have perhaps the budget to buy all of the tools, all of the uh, machines you would need to do that in an authentic way, you can capture the real environment and bring it into your, your, uh, your prism theater simply by capturing an image or a video and bringing it in. You can also capture uh, a surgery that was being performed and bring that in as a training, as training content. So you can use the theater for viewing as well, instead of using it as an immersive environment to evoke that sense of pressure while you're in a, tr in a uh, training scenario, you could instead flip it and become uh, a viewing theater for, for seeing how a particular procedure plays out, where nurse position uh, is in a room and how they're accessing different tools during a procedure. So that localized scenes and scenarios is a really important feature of the product. Uh, and then just acknowledging that the contextual stimuli supports learning. So having the, the context for, you know, these are emergency exits, this is a pathway that shouldn't be blocked, there's a door that requires opening and closing, so let's not stand in front of it, or a cabinet that, um, you know, is in conflict with another device that's in the room, so we need to be aware of that and, and you know move slowly around it. You can gather those those uh, nuances from working within a prison theater. Oh, sorry, advanced too fast. 
Uh, so it is, so it provides a platform for agile and comprehensive training. Um, th this slide is acknowledging a, a tool that's been recently developed and added to our product. And I'm gonna kind of get into that uh, just a little further in the presentation. I didn't show it to you quite yet. But, um, but there is a debrief mechanism where you can actually go through a training and then debrief in the Prism Theater. So you can import a checklist straight into Prism. So you can add the uh, checklist with time intervals for expected time uh, and, and uh, instructional videos to support learning and a bunch of other tools that I'm gonna actually show you instead of talking about. Scaffold training, so, so this is all about creating standards at this point. What are, what are we doing to create standards? You can, you can scaffold your training, right? You can create a scene that has built-in uh, built checklists, for example, or built-in charts or graphs that help a learner get through a particular uh, exercise. Then you can remove those. Then you can add distractions or hazards that are gonna complicate a, a scene or a setting. You can also share content between PRISM systems. So anybody who, any program who has a PRISM theater uh, has the ability to export a PRISM file and share it with another institution. So creating something doesn't have to be strictly and only for your group. Uh, there is a PRISM community that is, that is excited about creating and sharing content. Uh, the, the idea to, to continue to exercise, um, you know, self-guided and instructor-led options. So you're, you're exercising your training through different, uh, different possibilities. You can set up a self-guided mode where the prison theater doesn't require a, a controller. You can set it up in a theater like this where you have a gallery that you can select a scene to go into that requires no tablet controller. You can also, um, when I show you the checklist functionality, you'll see a little bit more about the self-guided option. Instructor-led options allow an instructor to evaluate a student while in the theater. So by bringing in a checklist, you can set up measures of, uh, of performance, and then as a student goes through simulation, you can you can uh, grade them essentially in their in their performance or evaluate their performance, so that you have a meaningful debrief within the, uh, the theater immediately following the simulation, uh, all in real time. So the uh, the idea that it is that you are developing and demonstrating skills in an environment that's interactive. So it's a memorable experience. It's an interactive experience. Which promotes learning. The uh, the idea of the review. So the the one of the uh, distinguishing characteristics of Prism that stands out from any other type of uh, simulation room is the idea that your session is that can be recorded for immediate after action review or debrief. Um, the data that's captured about events that are logged. So your interaction. Uh, as you catalog your, your checklist, as you go through each item uh, that's required of you, it's all recorded, you can export that information, and therefore we provide group recording tools. So you can actually compare a learner over time, so you can measure growth, and you can pair learners in a group, so you can have uh, an idea of, of kind of a performance that way. So this all builds to the value for the institution, the instructor, and the learner. And so for the institution, the idea being you're increasing the quality of testing and instruction by providing localized real content. Uh, it's a multi-purpose room. So recognizing that maybe you have, maybe space is limited, maybe budget is limited. You can create one space that can now be used to recreate many different scenes rather than having to use the footprint of your simulation center to create each one of those individual uh, scenario backgrounds. And it can be cost effective in that way. And it's certainly very easy to use. It's all just intuitive touch. For the instructor, you have a force multiplier that helps reduce uh, admin workload. So you, the self-guided feature in particular allows uh, students to get repetition training so that an instructor can step in, review a, a debrief, and remediate where they see a need rather than having to uh, watch and participate in the, in the simulation as a whole, you can now review and, and, and kind of address any items that need uh, additional attention. Standardization of training is a clear benefit so that you have something replicable for, uh, for class after class, again, the immediate debrief. For the learner themselves, it's the immersive content first and foremost, right? Getting a student into an environment that gives them a sense of presence in an environment that's, that would be more typical 
of where their career is headed, right? So if it's EMS and it's a roadside recovery, as we can see kind of in the bottom uh, right picture on this screen, creating a video that has semis whizzing by and the sound and the, uh, the vibration of that is an intense experience. And capturing that in a sterile classroom is quite difficult. In a prison theater, it becomes a lot easier. So it's an engaging experience. Again, self-guided learning is possible, self-assessment, uh, and immediate feedback. Uh, Add-ons and customization. So because our experience in VR goes back 20 years, it means we've worked with a lot of different hardware and software devices and companies um, that have that have kind of remained through that, that long period of time. And, um, and those relationships have led to, well, the development of our tools to support plugins for their for other tools and, uh, and the integration of these, these uh, components. So one thing that comes up quite frequently is biophysiological data tracking or, or biofeedback. It's kind of another word for that. Um, this means we can track pulse, respiration, EDA, EEG, et cetera, right? This means you can hook a student up to measure uh, these metrics of cognitive load while under a stressful environment. So if you're working on a research project and this is an interesting tool for you, be happy to talk about that. Or if you wanna make sure your scenes are delivering the anxiety that you're aiming for, these might be good tools in order to kind of help guide you towards creating those types of environments. Uh, scent delivery systems, uh, also 3D visualization, meaning uh, the, the scenes can be captured in 360 3D. Prism is out of the box uh, able to be configured for that. Uh, that is not, that is, there's a differentiator there between 3D interaction. If you're looking for 3D interaction, we can lean back on our Wizard 3D authoring tool, and then you can use the same theater for bouncing between two different software platforms, one that allows you to immediately and quickly produce image and video based content, that's PRISM, and 3D authoring tool, uh, you know, creating, I guess, 3D models for real-time rendering and exploring and interacting with uh, the world in that way, and that would be leveraging our Wizard software. So the same theater can be used to kind of handle both. And then there's networking systems. So using a cave to visualize or interact with, a, say, a VR goggles uh, user. These become, um, this, this becomes possible because all of our software and hardware plays nice together. So we also do custom content development, custom hardware uh, integration configuration. So, um, so with that, I would like to now jump back into the theater and kind of show you a couple of the tools that I that I talked about that I'd like to show you. So specifically, um, I'm gonna get to, and you're gonna see the interface right now, which is actually great. Um, this is the Prism Theater. Oh, actually, I turned your share screen off. I apologize for that. Turn it back on to show you exactly what I'm doing. So I'm in the uh, in our gallery mode, and I'm filtered by, um, you know, I, I created a filter that limits the amount of scenes that I would want to show up for a healthcare-related demonstration. I'm going to exit my gallery mode and uh, find a particular scene that I uh, created to show a training demonstration. So here, I've now um, started a scene. This is what the control interface looks like. And I'm going to navigate away from that so that we can focus on the screen in front of me. So now you should be able to now see my, see me in the, uh, in the room and not my screen anymore. So here is a, it's a 360 environment that, uh, where we got some rubble from, I think it was an earthquake or a flood. And I'm using this as the backdrop for a training session that's related to a first responder to a trauma patient. So the protocol we're gonna see uh, is pulled straight from uh, a, a trauma response protocol that, that we had access to. So on the screen, these are giving me prompts. And right now I'm in what we acknowledge as a self-guided mode. So this means I am, as a student, not relying on an instructor. And instead, the checklist has been imported into PRISM and it's allowing me to go through step-by-step uh, -step instructions to to force the muscle memory and the uh, and kind of the order of exactly how I ought to go through this training exercise. So I should have a patient in front of me, right? So I should have my trauma patient, whether that's an actor or a um, or a mannequin. And what I'm going to do is start the start the training by clicking this arrow here. It's asking me to now start a neck assessment. And the first list uh, first task on my list is to inspect for DCAP DTLS. So I'm going to go through. A, an evaluation for any blood, check my hands, and advance. So I've acknowledged I've completed that task. 
Moving on to the next one, palpate cervical spine for step off and TIC. I can do that and then move on to the next. So I'm just using my hands here to, to show you because I'm actually capturing a video that's gonna, I'm gonna be able to play back and, and see my actual performance as I go through these exercises. So we check jugular veins, okay. Um, start chest assessment. All right, next part of the assessment, inspect the decap and DLS palpate for TIC. Now this is decap, DTLS gets the chest, looking for blood, nothing. Okay, also pay for lung sounds, get my stethoscope out, I'm listening for lung sounds. And then, uh, and then I think that's my last uh, item. Should take me out of, uh, out of the self-guided training mode, straight into my debrief. And I know the resolution on this web camera isn't gonna be good enough to actually pick out the details here. And I apologize for, uh, for the level of detail that you can see. I'm gonna point it out anyway. Across the top is a timeline with the events log in order, which I can actually touch each event and snap to that, that moment in time um, on, the, uh, on the screen. Maybe if I actually have my lights on, if I turn them off, maybe that'll help a little bit. The, uh, the events are also listed in a row or in a column here. So you can see I can kind of go through each event. And when I'm on that event, the video on the right hand side is updating in real time. And if I want to see myself, get an evaluation for any blood, check my hands, and advance. So I, so I can replay, pause, and rewind my own performance in the room in real time. So I can see what I'm doing. If an instructor says, hey, you didn't do something properly, and I say, yes, I did, it's very easy to just turn the video on and go to the point uh, in the exercise that we're talking about and actually see exactly what I did. Um, also, you have time intervals that are coded red or green for whether or not you performed within the allotted time or you went beyond it. Again, this is just giving an instructor a visualization and data point that they can work from. So if they want to remediate because someone took extremely long amount of time to perform a particular task, they could put in uh, you know, values that represent how long things should take and then be able to then see uh, exactly how long things did take and, uh, and get back to their students. You can also, as an instructor, for this self-guided mode, uh, include instructional videos within, uh, within each task, right? So however you break it up, in this case, the inspector DCAP VTLS, I've included a video that I pulled offline. That was in a trauma situation, right? So we're looking for all these things, DCAP VTLS, that... And this video goes on to explain exactly what I should be looking for. So again, it's self-guided uh, theater. The student can get the instruction they need with an exemplary case, whether it's a video or a chart or a picture or just text. The instructor has a way of communicating how things ought to be done, and the student has a way of reviewing what they did, how things, how things should be done, how long it took them, and in what order they performed the tasks. So you can now kind of go through different pages, you know, depending on how many tasks there are, you may have multiple pages and all of that is now categorized and all of it is exportable so that you can then get into, uh, you know, the group reporting tools uh, on the back end. So I'm going to turn my, uh, I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to share my screen again. And now I am going to address any questions that may have come up during uh, during this presentation. So it looks like there's just a few questions and, and you can uh, feel free to continue to write in any questions into the question box in case there's any more. Um, my uh, my colleague Bell is helping me out to write in any more questions that uh, have shown up during the presentation. So I'll start uh, addressing these right away. So what's a good size uh, room for PRISM? Okay, that comes up quite frequently. The um, And so I tried showing those different configurations just to kind of get ahead of that a little bit. The, the size of the room, though, is dependent on um, on the ceiling height. And how many projectors we, we can uh, we can place kind of in that in that space. So, for example, um, a single projector that we're going to provide will give you a maximum width of about 15, 16 feet. That would be the, the max we would recommend, and that will require quite a tall ceiling. So you'd be looking at like a 12 or 13 foot high ceiling, and that's just the math of it. So it's not 
that we want to add more projectors. It's just that it's an expanding rectangle and, and you know, as, as wide as you go, you have to accommodate with a certain ceiling height. Uh, so in this case, we would recommend a room for a single projector per wall system, no greater than 15, 16 feet is pushing it. So anywhere from about 11 to 15 feet is in, a, is in the sweet spot uh, for a single projector per wall traditional prism theater. Uh, and can a room be used for 3D or just 2D? So again, the, uh, the theater is generally used as a 2D immersive environment. It, you can bring in 3D uh, images. If you brought in 360 3D images, it would strictly be the visualization of those images. 3D interaction, as you think of it with VR goggles, is something quite different. And that's something we have expertise in, but I, but I want to separate that from the conversation about PRISM in particular. PRISM is meant to simplify this down to image and video based um, interactive walls, touch point triggers. When you get into 3D interaction, it requires uh, an art workflow to support real time rendering and our wizard software. So it's getting beyond what we provide with the traditional prism system. But if you're interested in that, I'm certainly happy to, to kind of sidebar and go down that path with you. Uh, we do have the expertise. Can you demo prism on site? Um, Taking PRISM to your client site, to, to a, an actual, uh, for an evaluation is quite difficult uh, just because it requires the setup and tuning of a projection system. So it becomes something that's difficult to travel with. But we have two options uh, that I think are quite, quite good. One is we have client sites that are, that are spread out quite a bit. And if you uh, can travel uh, somewhat, we might be able to get you in the door to see PRISM at a client uh, site, and that gives you a use case and a reference as well. So hopefully that's a good solution there. Also, if you want to see what we call virtual prism, we can give you a, a VR goggle experience of a prism room. But it is a little bit of, uh, you know, you got to kind of think through what that actually means. It's, it's showing you something that is not actually what is delivered, right? You're, sh you're seeing something in VR and experiencing it as if it were three or four walls of a room but that's what we actually deliver is the projection system. So you can get virtual uh, prism if you have an application for that, it is productized, but in general, uh, we can use that as a demonstration tool, but please remember this is a brick and mortar projection uh, system. The recording be available for the session. Absolutely, we can make that available afterwards. Please follow up with me. I'll end this presentation back on the slide with my contact information. So you're welcome to send me an email, make sure we, uh, we get the, the presentation sent out to you. And I'll just swipe out of this before we jump out of a plan. I'm not sure how that looks on web yeah. and, uh, and I think I'm going to wrap it up there. My contact details are listed here. And uh, if there's anything we can do for you, please, uh, please reach out.